I'm Grant Robertson. I'm Christina Warren. And we uh, we have a letter from a viewer, as we do every week. It's amazing how that happens. It is. It's like they just magically come. They just appear right before we tape. Shows. And they just happen to be exactly about what topic we're going to oh, cover. Oh, it's amazing. It's, 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 the it's the like we'll be thing. thinking about doing a show about something and then someone will write and it. How do I do that? Letter. It's perfect. So, Christina, who, who wrote us this week and what do they have to say? Dear Squadcast. I'm tired of Windows Vista, and I can't afford a Mac, let alone all the lattes and hoodies I would need to hang out with the Mac guy. Hi, hey, join the club. I want to try Linux, but I'm afraid it will be too hard, and I don't know where to start. Can you help? Sincerely, Colonel Curious in Kyoto. Well, Colonel Curious... In Kyoto. In Kyoto. We can help you with that. We have one of our own bloggers, uh, Kristen Shoemaker, who is a Linux nut to talk to you about what it takes to switch to Linux on this week's Squadcast. John, you mean... That's right, Murray. I got the promotion. Starting tomorrow, I'm no longer just a shipping clerk. I'm chairman of the board. And it's all because of... Your product here. So we are talking about what it's like to switch to Linux. Switch to Linux, yes. And we have with us a very cool interview. We do. Oh, God. Brand new blogger. Brand new blogger for Dallas Squad. Squad. And a total Linux nut, uh, Kristen Shoemaker. Kristen, welcome to the Squadcast. Welcome. Thank you very much. It's nice to be here. It's great to have you. Um, what so what would what would drive someone to do something so crazy as to ditch a major market operating system like Mac or Windows and jump to Linux? Why did you switch? I switched mainly because of curiosity. I was building my own computer right from scratch. Uh, this was about in two thousand two, and I figured it was just so fascinating to see how the hardware worked. I wanted to see how the software worked as well, and really the only way you can go in go in and see the layers of software and how everything plays with your hardware and plays with the other components of your operating system is to really get in there and start playing with Linux. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a little bit scary and I have to say that your best friend in this space is the internet. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you, you gotta have another computer up and running. Mm -hmm. You get online, you start asking questions and the community is great. They're very sure. friendly. Um, if you lay out what your problem is, tell them that I don't know what I'm doing, I want to learn, and explain to them that you can't search for the problem and you are still cut and can't come up with the answer, they're more than willing to help you. Absolutely, but it's a lot easier now to switch to Linux, don't you think? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. I, with the advent of the Ubuntu um, Live CD, that you basically just put the CD in your disk drive and let it run, it doesn't touch anything on your hard drive unless you want it to, mm -hmm. and to install it, you just hit install, <laughs> and it walks you right through it, and it's, it's definitely gotten a lot easier. It's, it's pretty point and click, and now with so many online applications like Google Documents and things like that, and with Open Office, I mean, it's it's an, it's an, it's not as much of an uphill battle as it used to be. If I were a, 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 a Windows user today, and I've never touched Linux, and I'm curious, you know. I mean, I think a lot of a lot of Download Squad readers are that kind of person. You know, like they're you curious. Are. They're not necessarily, uh, they're, you know, they're not necessarily a, a, a high-end technical user, but they're probably a power user, and they're getting better all the time. And they want to learn more. And they want to learn more. Um, what are the things that you would tell me if I were a, a Windows user who is looking to ditch Windows and go to Linux today? Uh-huh. So that you can so that you can actually um, when you're 
when you're playing with your system, your home partition sits by itself and untouched by the actual underpinnings of the operating system. Mm -hmm. And if you decide you want to change your operating system, if you want to go from Ubuntu to Zenwalk or to uh, Fedora, mm -hmm. you can actually just install from your root partition on the other partition, leave your home partition untouched, and you will never lose a document. You won't lose any settings. So you can actually try different, different Linux flavors. Okay. Without losing all your documents. What are the advantages to switching? You know, if, you I, if I'm on the fence, what what are what advantages am I looking at if I go to Linux versus staying on Windows? Um, it's a very fast operating system. It's very secure. Um, I don't worry about viruses. Mm -hmm. I don't worry about Trojans. Um, they just they they can't run. But you know, if what if I'm a user that that is interested in benefits of switching to Linux, but maybe I'm not such a tinkerer, and I really just, you know, I, I want to use my computer, I want to use it for productive work, um, you know, is, is, is a modern Linux distribution for me? It is. Um, it can do everything Windows can do. Um, it does it more securely. Um, the only thing that you're going to be missing out on really is games. A number of um, Linux programs now that will open Word documents, that will open Excel documents. Um, the internet browsing is, is safe and secure. Um, there's a lot of really nice calendar um, personal information manager applications in, in both desk, and, and all desktop um, environments, KDE, GNOME. Um, you can really make the system yours, even without being a tinkerer. Cool. Well, Kristen, thank you for shedding a lot of light on, uh, on, on switching to Linux for us. Thank you so much. You are about to witness history in the making. VLC, or Video LAN Client. It's a video player for Windows, Mac, and Linux, and works like a dream. Amarok. It's like iTunes for Linux, works with your iPod, it has a way where you can buy music, and it will play all your MP3s. Very cool. MPlayer, it's another video player for Linux, an alternative to VLC. And basically, if your video won't play in VLC, it will probably play in MPlayer. Yeah. Okay, so Photoshop isn't available for Linux. That kind of sucks. However, GIMP is available, and it's free, and it does a lot of the same stuff that Photoshop does. You know, it used to be that opening Office documents in Linux was a real problem. These days, not so much. OpenOffice is a free Office suite for Linux, Mac, and Windows that pretty much opens anything Microsoft Office can throw at it. So that's another wait, episode. Wait, is that it? I'm sorry, what? Is that it? I mean, are we done? Um, yeah, I think, I mean, I think that's pretty much it. We did the interview, and we did the we did five, five, and, and um, then, yeah, we should. Some... So that is it, okay, yeah. well. I know, well, we're one trick pony. We really There's are. It's not much to this at all. It doesn't take much to long at all, really. No. Anyway, um, I'm Grant Robertson. I'm Christina Warren. Join us next time on the Squadcast and send us your comments, questions. Squadcast at downloadsquad.com. That's right.